On the first day of the restaurant shutdown due to COVID-19, I read in the New York Times that one New Yorker placed a $10,000 order to the Bells of New York for hundreds of pounds of expensive steaks and racks of lamb. I mean to each their own, but to me, this is not the time for celebration food. It's time for humble comfort food. So today we are making this stew. Yes, that very one, Allison Roman's chickpea stew that took the internet by storm last year. There are infinite variations of this dish. Today we're making it my way, but I'm sure Allison would approve. Okay, so what are the big differences between Allison's stew and mine? I add potatoes. I don't know what it is about chickpeas and potatoes, but it's a killer combo. The other difference is the aromatics. Allison's stew is inspired by Southeast Asia with coconut milk and ginger, and mine is inspired by Spain with smoked paprika, cumin, and coriander. You have two options with chickpeas, canned or dry. I'm using dry today and I'm cooking them using my favorite bean method, bean method. <laughs> at least it's my favorite at the moment, which is slow cooking in the instant pot. If you have some other way for cooking dry beans, just use that, but here is what I do. The day before I plan to make the stew, I dump one pound of chickpeas into the instant pot. I add eight cups of cold water, one and a half tablespoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. For all other salt types, use three quarters of a teaspoon. Stir, cover, set the pressure release knob to venting, press the slow cook button, Set the time to 12 hours. Make sure you're on the more setting and turn off, keep warm. This whole procedure takes me less active time than opening and draining four cans. And I usually do this overnight before making my stew. If you want to use canned chickpeas, you'll need four 15 ounce cans. And I suggest you drain and rinse them. Okay, so you've got yourself cooked chickpeas somehow, and it's time to make the stew. Set a large pot of a medium heat and add about three tablespoons of olive oil. While it's heating up, dice two yellow onions. The size doesn't really matter. There is no such thing as too much onion, at least if they're cooked. No need for perfect dice, so feel free to skip the horizontal cut. Dump the onions into the pot, salt them, and cook stirring occasionally until they are completely translucent, tender, and brown. You don't want them to brown too fast. We really need to give them a chance to get tender, so regulate the heat as necessary. This will take about 15 to 20 minutes. I usually use this time to chop anything else I need for this dish. When the onions are tender and brown, add two sliced garlic cloves. You can also put them through a garlic press. Then add whatever spices you want to use. This is all very flexible, but here is what I use. Three teaspoons of Spanish smoked paprika, two teaspoons cumin, two teaspoons coriander, and two teaspoons turmeric. I think chili flakes would be fabulous here, but no one in my family likes spicy food besides me, so I am leaving them out. Stir everything together to let the spices toast a bit and get aromatic. About a minute. Then add one to two cups of canned tomatoes or one to two tablespoons of tomato paste. Add half a cup of dry white wine. Stir everything together and let it come to a simmer. Time for potatoes. We are using Red Bliss potatoes today because they can withstand long cooking and turn creamy without falling apart. Peel and dice three potatoes. If you want to prep them ahead of time, cover them in cold water so that they don't discolor. Since we have acidic ingredients in our stew, the potatoes will take about an hour to cook. If you want to speed things up, you could boil them separately in salted water, then drain and add to the finished stew. This way, both the stew and potatoes will be done in about 30 minutes. We are back to our stew pot. Let's add the potatoes. I'm adding mine raw, a bay leaf, and the chickpeas with all their cooking liquid. If using canned chickpeas, drain and rinse them and add enough water to just cover all the ingredients. Cover the pot and bring it to a simmer. Then reduce the heat to low and simmer gently with the cover on for 30 minutes to give the potatoes a head start. 
Now it's time for the greens. Although you can use any greens in this dish, like spinach, Swiss chard, and kale, I believe that nothing beats colored greens. They are the sturdiest of all leafy greens and can withstand long cooking. If using colored greens and kale, remove the stems before chopping. This too will feed my family for two days, so I will be reheating half of it tomorrow. If I was using a more delicate green, I would have to reserve half of the stew before adding the greens, which to me is a hassle. Kale will be okay reheated too, though I would give it a shorter time than colored greens. If you are using spinach and Swiss chard, add them right before serving. Okay, our potatoes have been going for 30 minutes. Let's add colored greens and give ours to another 30 minutes of simmer. After I get the simmer, I'll take the lid off to allow the sauce to reduce some. Let's see if our potatoes are done. Yes, they are nice and creamy. Excellent. Let's add a quarter cup of heavy cream. I think it's a good idea to fish out the bay leaf at this point since it looks an awful lot like our greens. Three tablespoons of butter. I know it looks like two, but I ended up sneaking in more later. One tablespoon of pomegranate molasses or two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar and salt. All the dairy is optional. To keep this to vegan, try Miyoko's butter or give it a few big logs of olive oil. This dish really needs some fat to taste good. Don't forget to taste for salt and mess with it until you get it right. I'm serving my stew with some flatbread cilantro and a drizzle of olive oil. As Seminus Rat says, you can never have too much oil. It's also excellent over rice or any other grain. I hope you give this humble stew a try. I also hope that by the time this video is edited and posted, the world will be in a better place. Here are more thought-provoking culinary videos for you to check out. And if you are ever allowed to leave the house again, and if I am ever allowed to serve food, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.